now, brought to you by Tide. All over America, women have proved to themselves you can't be Tide for the cleanest clothes. The Edge of Night. What's this? You always tear clothes in half before you wash them? No, but it's a good way to demonstrate Tide's cleaning power. Come see. We'll save one half of each dirty garment. And we'll wash these other halves with Tide. Thank you. In the new AMC washer. AMC packs Tide in every automatic. Mm -hmm. A new AMC feature is Cyclotron programming. Press one fabric selector button and everything from water temperature to rinsing time is controlled automatically. AMC has nine spray rinses plus a deep overflow rinsing. Time for our Tide wash results. Oh boy, what a difference. Yes, when a product gets close that were dirty as this, clean as this, it belongs in automatic washers. Sure does, and you know 25 makers pack Tide in their automatic washers at the factory. Use Tide in your washer. Mr. Moore. Where are you? <laughs> I'm on my way. I'm calling you from a phone booth so you can speak freely if there's anything you want to say. Are you all set? <laughs> I certainly am. I'm all dressed up just the way you told me. I couldn't look any more conspicuous unless I was carrying a bass drum. Got my suitcase. And those knockout pills? Oh, sure. I wouldn't forget those. Those little pills are right in the bottom of my purse. Any change in the plans? No. No, you just go over to the La Siesta Motel and register as Mr. and Mrs. Jack Lane. Seems strange if I do that when there's no Mr. Lane on hand. I've already taken care of that. I talked to the manager. I told him I was Jack Lane and that my wife would arrive shortly, but I would be delayed, and so you would register for us both. You do think of everything, don't you? Well, I try to, especially when there's so much at stake. There must be no slip up booth. I'm on the ball, Mr. Moore. I'll not only enjoy blackmailing Mr. Lane, I have a private score to settle with him. What time do you think Lane will be at his apartment? I don't know. He'll probably eat dinner out with his wife away. Well, you call him as soon as you're ready. Now, do you know what you're going to say to him that will persuade him to come to the motel to meet you? I'll think of something. No, I'll think of something. Now, wait. Ah, uh, you tell him that you have information regarding someone who's trying to steal the motor. <laughs> Mr. Moore, you are clever. I never would have thought of telling him the truth. Now, when he joins you, you'll have to stall for a while until you get a chance to drop one or two of those tablets in his drink. So, uh, uh, tell him that you overheard one of the girls talking in the restroom at Grimsley's. Okay. Anything else? No. Except for one word of caution. Don't forget that your name at the motel is Mrs. Jack Lane. All right, Mr. Moore. If there's any trouble, I'll... There must be no trouble. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> What's the use of fooling myself? My family knows they should brush their teeth after every meal, but I know they don't. They can always say, But, Mommy, I didn't have a chance. Look, how can I always brush? You see, that's why we've switched to Gleam. Gleam, the toothpaste for people who can't brush after every meal. Just one Gleam brushing destroys decay and odor-causing bacteria. You see, Gleam and only Gleam contains GL70 to fight decay and odor. Just watch this scientific comparison. Here are mouth bacteria before brushing. Now see how one Gleam brushing destroys most bacteria. Not only destroys decay bacteria, but also stops mouth odor all day for most people with just one morning brushing. Means a sweeter kiss. So if brushing after meals is your problem, use Gleam. It's for people who can't brush after every meal. Come in, Willie. Come in. Michael. 
Well, now, who was it who called upon Ruth Hickam? A woman. A woman? Yeah. Oh. Why did you uh, consider that to be so important that you called me up and said you had something hot for me? I'll tell you, my friend, Mrs. Hickam. A mother? Could be. Hmm. That's very interesting. One of my men followed her, and she's moved over in the rough section over on the west side in one of those kind of broken down apartment houses. Uh -huh. Maybe from out of town, I don't know, but I think we ought to talk to this lady. Why? After all, who could tell us more about dear little Ruthie, I suppose, than her own mother? Huh? Willie, it has been reported to me that mothers are notoriously prejudiced in favor of their offspring. No, not this one. Why not? Well, my man was outside the door of Ruthie's apartment tonight. These two little ladies are having a conversation and calling each other, I would call them, uncomplimentary names, screaming like a couple of alley cats. Huh. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. The woman left, it was because our Ruthie said, get out, and practically threw her out the door, as a matter of fact. Hmm. Yes, I think maybe I would like to talk to this Mrs. Hickam. What about supper, buddy? Oh, uh, I think that's a wait. <laughs> Siesta Motel. I'll see. I'm sorry Miss Violet hasn't shown up yet. She's my assistant. She takes care of the switchboard. I'm afraid his room doesn't answer. You're welcome. I'm Mrs. Jack Lane. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I'll have your bill ready for you. I'll send for your luggage just as soon as the boy comes back. Yes, sir. You know, that thing drives me crazy. I'm Mrs. Jack Lane. Oh, single or double? Has my husband registered? Oh, what's the name? <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> yes? Well, I'm very, well, I, well, I'm very, you I'm very, well, the boy hasn't come back yet. Yes, ma'am. I sent the boy out to put some luggage in a car and he hasn't come back yet. I was supposed to meet my husband here. Has he registered? Uh, what's the name? Lane. Jack Lane. I'm Mrs. Jack Lane. Lane. No, I'm afraid there's nobody by that name here. Here, what am I going to do? Well, if you'd like to wait for him, the uh, cocktail lounge in there is more comfortable. You don't have to have a cocktail. Is there a message for me? Uh, what's the name? Lane. Lane. Oh, Lane. I, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, let's see now. Lane. 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 Oh, Jack Lane. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. I took it myself. It's right here. Yes, Mr. Lane phoned and said that he'd been delayed. Oh, not again. But that as soon as Mrs. Lane arrives to get the rooms, he reserved a suite. Oh, how nice. And to wait for him. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, uh Zuckerman. Harvey Zuckerman. I'm the manager. Mr. Zuckerman. <laughs> well, you can register. Oh, my, my husband usually registers for us. Well, just sign Mr. and Mrs. Jack Lane and fill out all the little spaces. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yes? Well, just, if the boy isn't back right away, I will bring the ice water myself. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, now. 
Oh, you, your home is right here in Monticello, Mrs. Lane. Yes, my husband's one of the younger executives with Grimsley Corporation. Oh, is that so? <laughs> yes, we're, we're having our apartment redecorated, and you know what it's like living there with that kind of thing going on. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so we, um, we thought we'd get away for, from it all <laughs> for just one night. I don't blame you. I hope you will like it here at La Siesta, Mrs. Lane. I'm sure I shall. Mm. Well, now, your husband said that he wanted the very best we have, so I've reserved the... Uh, bridal suite. <laughs> that will be very nice. Well, if you'll sit down and make yourself comfortable for just a small minute, I'll have the boy get your bags. <laughs> and if he isn't back immediately, I'll take it up to your rooms myself. Thank you so much, Mr. Zuckerman. Not at all. <laughs> continue with our story in just a moment. When a dog comes home with dirty paws, his best friend is Mr. Clean, the all-time champ of all kinds of cleaning, Procter & Gamble's new all-purpose liquid cleaner. On wash day, soap dirty, grimy paw prints with Mr. Clean. They just disappear, because he helps laundry suds do cleaner, fresher smelling wash. Grimy paw prints on painted doors, no trouble at all for Mr. Clean himself. He cleans anything washable, faster and easier. This means I'm hungry. It also means dirty dirt. But Mr. Clean just wipes it away, nothing to it. Why, he'll even clean the dog himself. No wonder dogs love Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. talk to you about your daughter. Uh, may we come in? Talk to me about who? Ruth. Oh, that one. She isn't my daughter. I wouldn't know her if she was. She's my stepdaughter and she's a um, mm, selfish, ungrateful, no good. Well, in that case, we do want to talk to you about your your daughter. The first half of the Edge of Night has been brought to you by Gleam Toothpaste. Continue with our story immediately following station identification. The second portion of The Edge of Night is brought to you by Pillsbury's Instant Mashed Potatoes, Pillsbury Chocolate Fudge Cake, and Pillsbury Buttermilk Pancakes. What do you want to know about Ruth? Well, Mrs. Hakem, in our business, it uh, often becomes necessary for us to obtain certain confidential information. Oh. Checking up on her credit, huh? Yes. Yes, that's, I guess you'd call it that, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Living in a fancy apartment like that with all them pretty clothes 
And she'd still be buying things on credit. Well, it's done constantly, Mrs. Hagem. Just like her old man. Debts, 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 all the time. Booze and debts. Ah, uh, you want to know what I think about Ruth? I'll tell you. I wouldn't trust her for a plug nickel. Well, that's... That's very interesting. Well, I received the impression, then, that you and your uh, stepdaughter don't get along very well together. Hmm. You see, the important thing here is that we've got to have an opinion that's not prejudiced or biased. I mean, might not be trustworthy, you know, mm -hmm. judgment of her. I ain't prejudiced and I ain't biased. I know what I'm talking about. Believe me, I know. Listen. If you trust little Ruthie, you deserve to get rooked. Why do you say that, Mrs. Hakem? I mean, do you know of some specific instance in which she's uh, shown herself to be untrustworthy? <laughs> you bet I do. Well, I, I assure you that anything you might say here would be strictly confidential. I don't care if it's confidential or not. I don't care if you tell her to her face what I say. She knows what I think about her. Listen, I went to see her today to give her a chance to show her gratitude for what I've done for her, and you know what? She wasn't grateful. <laughs> First words out of her. Get out. Get out. Get out or I'll throw you out. Yeah. My own stepdaughter said that to me. Well, Mrs. Hagen, now, in all fairness to her, maybe she, she wasn't feeling well, huh? You wouldn't try to defend her if you knew what I know. Well, um, why don't you tell us, Mrs. Hagen? All right. I will. Ruthie was ten years old when I married her old man. T ten years old. She was a, an ugly little toe-headed brat, already run wild. Well, she couldn't have been very wild at the age of ten, could she? Oh, that one could. I tried to take her in hand, teach her how to be a lady. Yeah. Where was this, Mrs. Hakem? This time, Monticello here? No. Denver. I always lived in Denver. I only came here a couple days ago looking for Ruth because, well, because I needed some money to live on. How long has it been since you've heard from her? Oh, a long time. She ran away from home when she was 16. Well, uh, was this a, uh, was it a good home? It was the best I could make. My husband, her father, was no good. Drank, never worked steady. You took care of her, huh? That'd be about uh, six years then. Yeah, I tried to. I sent her to school. I, I kept after her, trying to make her learn something instead of running around wild, carousing at night. I nagged her into going to secretary school. Paid for it myself, too, money I earned. Yeah. When she thought she knew enough to hold down a steady job, she left. Just left. Took the money out of my purse, all of it, cleaned me out. And no goodbye, no thank you. Did you ever hear from her again? No. I saw her. Two, three years later, in, on a street in Denver, and she was with a guy, all dressed up pretty. Too pretty for her to have earned the money to buy them clothes with the typewriter. But I spoke to her anyway. I spoke to her, and I, um... She pretended she didn't recognize me. Said to the man she was with, give the poor thing a dollar. Buy a cup of coffee. He handed me a dollar. Like a big shot, I threw it in her face and she laughed at me. Mrs. Hagem, how did you learn that she was here in Monticello? Oh, some girl she used to know in Denver saw her here. She was here visiting and Ruth pretended that she didn't know her. Well, then a couple months ago, my husband died and drank himself to death. Didn't leave me anything and I couldn't get steady work, so... I thought I'd swallow my pride and come and look, look up Ruth, forget how much we hated each other. Maybe she'd stake me, help me find a job. 
Anything else you want to know? No, I, I, I don't think so, Mrs. Bickham. Listen, my best advice to you is don't trust little Lucy. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hagen. Thank you, Mrs. Hagen. These came just now, and I put them in a vase for you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, there was a card. It was tied on the box, and I put them right there in the flower. Oh. Oh. Oh, from your husband. Yes. Well, how very nice. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, it looks like there's going to be a second honeymoon. <laughs> yes. Yes, I guess, in a way, there is. Mm. Well, I've got to get back to my switchboard. <laughs> Excuse me. Our story continues after this message. A girl has to have a few secrets from her husband. Here's one of mine, new Pillsbury Instant Mashed Potatoes. He doesn't dream that these are instant because they have all the fluff and flavor of home mashed. And I, I can swish into dinner unsteamed serene. Here at last is an instant potato with the fluff and flavor of home mashed. New Pillsbury instant mashed potatoes. You can't tell them from home mashed because Pillsbury has what it takes, flakes. Only flakes whip up into this natural fluffiness, natural fresh flavor. Pillsbury promises you homemade fluff and flavor in new Pillsbury instant mashed potatoes. Try them, and try new Pillsbury quick hash browns, steakhouse-style hash browns, easy to make at home. Nothing says lovin' like something from the oven, and Pillsbury says it best. Well, <laughs> what do you think of our sweet Ruthie now? Really? I'm of the opinion that if somebody offered Ruth Heckman an attractive sum of money, she wouldn't hesitate a fraction of a second to sell out Winston Grinsley, Dick Appleman, or Jack. I guess the worst thing I can think of is a girl that's still out her own mother. Hmm? Even her stepmother. Just keep a look on her, will you? This girl quits her job at Grinsley, says she's going to leave town, and then she doesn't. Why? If she leaves town, we'll know it. Well, I'm more interested in case she doesn't leave town, and I'm interested to know why. Put two men on this girl, will you? If she talks to anybody, anybody at all, I don't care who it is, tell them to. Still want to call it, Jack? Yes. La Siesta Motel. Oh, yes, just a moment. Hello? Ruth, darling, this is Jack. As if I didn't. Please forgive me, darling, for not being there when you arrived. Oh, I miss you, dear. I'm lonely. But not for long, precious. How soon can you get here? I'm not sure. I'm tied up with some business. It's very important. Only important business would keep me away. Oh, I know. Oh, and darling, thank you for the flowers. They're lovely. 
until I sent them so you wouldn't forget me. <laughs> Silly boy. I'll be there as soon as I can. Don't be impatient. I can hardly wait. Bye now, my sweet. Bye-bye, Jack. back in just a moment. Look good? Want some? It's the new Pillsbury Deluxe Chocolate Fudge Cake, made from a new kind of mix. Pillsbury Deluxe Cake Mix, for cakes so rich, so moist, so quickly gone. The special way Pillsbury puts things together makes it easier for shortening and flavoring to spread richly, evenly, all through the cake. A Pillsbury Deluxe Cake keeps its fresh, moist taste longer than any mixed cake ever did before. New Pillsbury Deluxe Chocolate Fudge Cake. So rich, so moist, so quickly gone. Get Pillsbury New Deluxe Chocolate Fudge Cake Mix in this new package. Just one of seven deluxe flavors. Nothing says lovin' like something from the oven. And Pillsbury says it best. Watch this scene from tomorrow's story. Jack? Oh, is he there? May I speak to him, please? Thank you. Jack, this is Ruth. I've got to see you right away. It's about the Appleman motor. This is the newest link letter, my grandson, Mike. <laughs> Imagine me a grandpa. You know, grandpas used to look like this. And they used to eat heavy old-fashioned pancakes about as big as cartwheels. And then they went out to plow the back 40. Nowadays, Pillsbury gives you that same old-fashioned flavor in the lighter buttermilk pancakes folks want today. Yes, Pillsbury has created lighter buttermilks for today's modern taste in Pillsbury Buttermilk Pancake Mix. Just look at them. Each and every Pillsbury Buttermilk Pancake's a perfect fluff of flavor. Pour on the syrup, go to it. These are the lighter Pillsbury Buttermilks. Light to your fork and light to your taste. Pillsbury Buttermilk Pancake Mix, the leading buttermilk pancake mix by a country mile. The mix that makes those lighter buttermilks for today's modern taste. Get yourself a package, hmm? Tune in again tomorrow for The Edge of Night, created by Irving Bendy. The Edge of Night has been brought to you by Pillsbury's Instant Mashed Potatoes, Pillsbury Chocolate Fudge Cake, and Pillsbury Buttermilk Pancakes. Pillsbury, who helps you add a loving touch to every meal. Pillsbury. This is Harry Kramer inviting you to join us each weekday afternoon for The Edge of Night.